Remember the tool is still touching the work. I have not backed it out and I have loosened up uh, the graduated dial here, a collar, and I'm going to put it right on zero and I put a white mark on there the other day. So now I will tighten that down at zero and that will be my reference point because remember I have to back the tool out at the end of uh, each pass and then I can return it to the zero. I'm finally ready to take my first cut, my first scratch cut. Now watch the different things that I'm going to do. First of all, back the carriage out and now I'm going to engage the half nut lever. It doesn't matter where because now that's engaged for the the rest of the job. Do not change it. I'm going to turn the machine on and of course the carriage is going to advance right away. The tool will start cutting and then I will turn the lathe off, the motor off, and back this out at the same time when I come into the, uh, the undercut. And I'll give you a better view of that in a minute. But it's important to note here, I need to learn this myself, how quickly the lathe will stop. There's no brake on here, but it's going to coast to a stop. But it won't take too long to coast because I'm in back gears. I didn't put any oil on there yet. It isn't really necessary at, uh, for the scratch cut. But I want to take that scratch cut, and then I'm going to check it with the thread pitch gauge. So here we go. This is kind of a nerve-wracking time because you've got a lot of work into this already. You see how it started advancing right away? And I'm taking ever such a light cut. And it's coming in to the undercut. There it is. I turned it off and it stopped rather quickly. Now, at this point, I will back this out. And then I have to reverse the lathe. Now, some of you do not have a reverse on your lathe a motorized reverse. For instance, I do not on my other Atlas lathe. So at this point, you would have to back it up with the belt. Unplug it when you do that. And uh, be sure and have your safety glasses on. But I'm going to, since the tool is clear from the work now, reverse the machine. And you see it backing up. Now back up an extra quarter or half inch from the work because now there's all kinds of uh, backlash that I've introduced. So uh, I've got about a quarter of an inch there for the backlash to clear as I approach the work. And now I'll take a close up here and show you uh, the, the, what the scratch looks like and we'll confirm if we're really cutting 1.75 uh, millimeter uh, pitch. There's my scratch cut and here I am with the 1.75 and just lay it in there. Do it a little bit better like this for the camera. And can you see that it's just lined up perfectly so that confirms that the gear, gears have been set correctly as shown in the previous video. Now I'm ready to go in there for the kill and do some serious cutting. I'm going to make several passes here from this camera view without really looking at the, the, cu uh, the cutting tool. I'll show you that a little bit later. And so that you can see what I'm doing with my hands and the controls because that's really very important. Now the first thing I will do is to bring this into zero. Remember I had that backed off. So come into zero, which is my white line, right there. Now make sure you don't go a full revolution farther. Take a look, make sure that you are, and I'm okay. And then each time I'm going to feed in a few thousands here with the compound. Remember that all of the, the depth of cut is achieved here, not here. This is just a reference to zero every time. And so I'm going to turn in just a few thousands. And uh, remember the lead screw is already engaged with the half nut lever. So when I turn the motor on, it's going to start advancing and cutting. And I'll put a little oil on. There it is. Turn your phone off and concentrate. Have your uh, phone turned off. 
I know you can't see the switch, it's, it's farther down, but I turned it off. Now I'm backing this off. A full revolution or more, reversing the motor. Mark your switch so you don't go the wrong way. I pass the end of the work. I'm going to feed this back in to zero. Boy, those are small dials. About six or eight thousandths here, but remember, since we're cutting uh, at an angle here, or feeding at an angle, it isn't really taking off that amount. That's actually a trigonometric function. And in forward, there we go. Actually, this is a little safer than doing it uh, with the half knot lever. It's just that you, uh, it, this is a slow, very slow way to do it. Turn it off as it came into the undercut. I'll do one more. Back this off. Reverse the motor. This video is going to run a little long. Stop the motor. Do not uh, stop and start the, the uh, switch or to turn the switch on until all motion has stopped. With single phase, sometimes if you're running the motor fast and you go from forward to reverse, it will not reverse. That is not true with a three phase motor. And cross feed into zero. And the motor in forward, a little oil. off, reverse, I'm going to move the camera and I'm not going to show you any more of what I've done here but I did that enough times so I think you understand what I'm doing with my hands on the controls and that will become second nature for you after you've done enough whether this is metric or English. Some people prefer to uh, um, thread with their English threads, their imperial threads, in this method. I never do it, but many people do it. And you can do it if you do not own one of these, if there's not one of these on your machine. That'll, that allows you to do it. I have taken several passes off camera. There we go. Getting close to the undercut, turn the motor off, and make sure you back out far enough to where you clear the work, you don't tear it up on the way back. I like to go to about there, I'm turning the uh, cross feed in to zero. Feeding in just a little bit here with the compound. Go back and forward. About every three passes I like to take a pass without increasing the depth of cut. I think you're starting to understand what I'm doing. Now if you're getting a real bad cut, you can be pretty sure that it's probably your tool. Into zero. And so on. I took uh, another two passes without increasing uh, the depth of cut. And it has come to a V, so I think I'm ready to, uh, to check for the depth using the nut. I don't believe in air hoses, but uh, if you got an air hose and you do that, brush it off good. I like to use a chip brush. Don't put a rag on there while it's turning. 
I guarantee, and there's the nut from Ace Hardware. And it's going on. And the, the thread looks good and clean. Can you see that? It's not torn up. 12L14 is a wonderful steel to work with, uh, sometimes called Ledloy 300, if it was bought from Ryerson. And it goes on all the way. Not much wiggle to it. If you can wiggle it all over the place, you know, you're, you're too deep. One other thing that I like to do sometimes is to uh, turn the machine on. Now I'm done, I'm going to take it out of uh, uh, the threading position here. I have released uh, the half nut lever. And then I like to... I had to go over to the bench and grab my file. File it ever so lightly, just with a couple strokes like that. That's how I like to finish it up. Now we'll take a look at this uh, after I take it out. So that's it for the cutting operation and it went pretty smooth and there's a metric thread on an atlas lathe. This short clip is out of order, out of sequence uh, with the conclusion that's coming up next. But, uh, and this is free of charge. My optical comparator is going to make its uh, YouTube debut presently. This is the thread that I just cut, 12 millimeter. I took it on the milling machine, milled it exactly in half so I can get a decent profile on it, and cut it off the length, so that's it. This particular leaf here is from my Mitotoyo set. So we can count on this being high quality, accurate, and true. Whereas this little cheapie that came with that uh, uh, threading set, you know, eh, I would say it's marginal in, in uh, quality, but you know, maybe it was all right. But furthermore, this is riveted and I can't get it apart. And the Mitotoyo was made with a, a screw so I could remove that. So let's step over to the optical comparator and see if we get a fairly good uh, match. And uh, there's a number uh, 10 power lens in the uh, Shear Tomiko optical comparator and let's see what it looks like when we put it on the screen. Shear Tomiko, you know, made in Minnesota. There's the, the thread and there's the uh, gauge. Now let's take a look down on the screen and I will have to manipulate them a little bit. I hope this shows up all right on the screen. This is the first time I've ever done this but I'm having a heck of a time with dirt. I'm not in a laboratory here or a <laughs> I'm in my garage so there's dust and dirt everywhere and I'm bringing her into focus and you're going to notice a bit of a out of focus business here with with the actual thread because of the helix angle. It's not truly flat, unless I could take a cross section of it, whereas the gauge itself is flat. So I'm focusing a little bit. I'm able to move it back and forth. There is a grid on the screen also that uh, would allow me to do a measurement, but there's no metric there. But you can see I got a pretty darn good match there. I can move this a little bit and leave more of a gap there. It might demonstrate it a little bit better. I'm trying to move two different things here at one time and that's, believe me, not easy to do because any movement is greatly amplified. Maybe I need to move this one. But you can see how the profiles uh, move together. Now you see some uh, flat spots here. Those might also be burrs. I tried to deburr this the best I could after I milled it and uh, with a file and then I, I used a brush but I still got burrs here and, uh, and possibly a, a few little broken spots. But the pitch that I cut on this workpiece as compared, and this is an optical comparator, compared to what I'll consider a standard here. It's not laboratory grade or anything like that. It's shop grade, but 
you can see that I truly did cut a pitch of one of a 1.75 millimeter. So I hope you enjoy this little uh, episode here, or this little part, with the optical comparator, and I hope to use this in many more of my videos, if, uh, and let me know if you like this. I'll have to admit that this uh, gooseneck threading tool holder uh, worked quite nice, and that the thread is smooth. If you've never done this before and you're careless in uh, grinding your tool, or in your setup, and you get and you're using hot roll steel. Do not expect to, uh, the finish that I got there, but that looks pretty good. And that concludes this video on cutting a metric thread. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, and please subscribe and watch the previous videos in this series that I'm doing, starting at number 220 and going up to about uh, number 230. And there's a, there's just a few more that uh, follow. And in the upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to put uh, the back uh, the uh, quick change gearbox on this machine. And I'm going to take the uh, apron apart here to show you what's inside of the apron. All the mysteries will be revealed. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.